Hi everyone, it's Keely from Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. In today's soap, we'll be using the soap curls that we made in Wednesday's video, and we are doing lemongrass and Persian lime. Now, I have made lemongrass and Persian lime a number of times before, and I have filmed it once. And usually I would make it using some poppy seeds in the mix. But the last time I made that soap, I had some mixed reviews from my customers with a lot of them saying that they didn't want the poppy seeds in it. So I have redesigned the soap and I will be putting some embeds on this one as well. Now we did sell out of the one with the poppy seeds and I know several people want that one back. So I will also be making another batch of that, just won't be filming it. The lemongrass and Persian lime is my most popular fragrance that I do and it has notes of lime zest, lemon peel, lemongrass, jasmine and it's all in a base of vanilla and rosewood and it does have 0.7% vanillin in it and it does move a little bit quicker for me than some of my other fragrances that I use. So what I've got here in my big pot are my oils and as usual I'm going to pour my lye water solution down my stick blender into the oils just to prevent any splashback and then we're going to split it out for the colours. Okay, so we are all split out into our jugs and we're doing three equal colours here. The colours I'm using today, all of which are from my micro obsession, we have some Wellington, which is going into that one. We have some Lime Spider for in this jug here. And we also have some Elusive. Now that Wellington is going to go quite a funky colour and possibly even these greens will as well, but they will turn back as that soap cures. So I'm going to get these in and then I am going to mix in my fragrance. Now I'm not going to be too bothered if this does thicken up a little bit on me because I do want to do a layered soap, but more about that in just one moment. So I'm just going to pop these two jugs to the side for one moment. As I said, because I'm doing layers, I don't mind if this thickens up on me. So I will stick blend my fragrance in, but I will stick blend each of the layers each time I do them. Now I'm just going to grab my mould here. Now before I start pouring, what I do want to say is... I am making this soap on the 5th of January. So I prepared all my oils and my embeds on the 4th of January. I was busy doing that during the day and then that night I went into the house and I decided to watch some YouTube videos and I saw that Lee from Wickedly Goods had uploaded a video of lemongrass and Persian lime. So I thought, oh, I'll go and see what she's doing with hers this time. And as I started to watch the video, I was absolutely gutted as she explained what she was going to do and it was the exact same design as I've had in mind. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you will know that I've always said, I don't plan my soaps. I just work on the fly, decide what I'm going to do as I'm working with them. But I decided for this year that I was going to start planning my soaps. And in here, I'm writing down um, just things about the soaping um, fragrance and things like that. So there was last week's soap. And here is my lemongrass and Persian lime. So as you can see, I've got my three layers and the camera might not pick it up, but I've got some little lines that go up and down here and it says, hang out through layers. So as I was listening to Lee explaining what she was going to do with her soap, I thought, oh my God, I'm making this tomorrow and it's going to look like I've actually copied her design idea. I'm going to have to rethink this. Sadly for her, the design oh. idea actually didn't work. It was just too runny for her, but it still turned out, I think, a really nice soap. So then I thought, oh good, I can actually now still keep with my design idea and we'll see how it works out. So I'm going to get my fragrance blended into this one and then we're going to pour the first layer. I can see this is already starting to thicken up nicely for me. Mm. 
second thoughts are going to hand stir this in because I don't have enough room in my pot to really get that mixed in with the stick blender without making any more mess than what I've just done there. So my first layer was actually going to be the dark green so I'm going to move very quickly pop that one to the one side stop chatting so that I don't mess this design up anymore we're going to pour my fragrance up into my green we'll get this one mixed in and then we'll pour the dark green I wanted to do the dark green on the bottom then the light green and then the yellow on the top so we'll get that mixed in my jugs are probably a little bit full for any too vigorous stirring but we'll get it in there and hopefully that yellow won't set up too much so that is looking nicely mixed just get that last little bit there and get that one poured into the base I don't want it so thick that I can't get the hanger through it, but I want it thick enough that we do kind of get those distinct layers. I'm not going to save any of this in the pot, so we're going to scrape out as much as I can, just keeping in mind that I have got that yellow sitting there starting to set up. I'm just going to give the yellow a bit of a stir just to loosen it back up again because that does work with some of your fragrances. If your soap sets up, give it a stir and that sort of movement starts moving again. We're going to get the rest of the fragrance into our green. Stir that in and pour it on the top of that one. Then I'll pour the yellow on and then we'll get the hanger through it as well. going to get the rest of this yellow scraped out the container onto the top of this one and in answer to Lee's question about why we all we soapers scrape our buckets out of every last bit of soap that we possibly can the reason I do it it's just so much easier to clean on up if I can scrape as much soap out of these as possible then leave them to sit and saponify overnight it really doesn't take much to clean them out and if I'm really 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 good and get as much soap out of them as I possibly can to the point that they are you know practically clean I can actually pop them through the dishwasher as well and that means I've got no sort of oils that are sitting around in the dishwasher so it's a couple of different things but it is mainly just for cleaning so if you're a soap maker why do you tend to scrape your buckets out to within an inch of your life or do you just not bother scraping them out let me know down in the comments down below Okay, so what I have here in my little container is some of that elusive mica which has been mixed into some olive oil and I'm just going to put a couple of drops across the top here helps if I actually get some into the pipette well, I think we might be blocked that's better I'm just going to put just a few little drops not many because we have got the embeds to go on the top here of the pipette and I'm just going to move that around just to get a few little swirls of extra colour and I'm not going to put any of that lime spider because one of my embeds has some of that lime spider in this is just more to bring that colour through to the top of the soap All right so I can feel that that is setting up quite firmly so what we've got here these are the soap curls that we made in Wednesday's bonus video and what I'm going to do is just pop a soap curl into each of these soaps but what I'm going to do is line them up so that hopefully the soap cutter 
will cut through them. Now it may be also that when it does come time to cutting these soaps, I may have to trim the tops of these down a little bit. But for now, we're just going to put them in there like this. And it's they're meant to look a little bit like lemongrass and will hopefully look a little bit like lemongrass when we cut through them. It is, as I've said in other videos, it's all open to artistic interpretation. So some, sometimes things don't look exactly as we want them to or as exactly as they do in nature. But you can kind of get that sort of general idea. got to go on them are some little um, lime wedges as well and we're just going to put one of those onto each piece of soap that's it they're kind of in the middle here earlier I have made lemongrass and Persian lime before and I put the poppy seeds in it I'll leave a link to that video for you so you can have a look at the other way at which I make this soap and I am very interested to know do you like a bar of soap that has got scrubby bits in or do you prefer your bar of soap to be nice and smooth without any exfoliating bits and you'd much rather use something like a sugar scrub instead I'll leave a little poll up in the top corner of the video and then you can let me know what you prefer. I kind of get mixed results from people about what they do like. If I'd make a bar with exfoliating bits, nobody wants it. And if I don't put the exfoliating bits in, um, people ask me why I haven't got the those little bits in again. So my lemongrass and Persian lime, I will do two ways because it is such a popular fragrance. And I know that some want those poppy seeds in and some of them don't. So there we go. We have got the last little lime wedge into that soap. And I will bring you down for a closer look of lemongrass and Persian lime. Okay, so here we are. This is lemongrass and Persian lime. I'm not putting any glitter on the top because I do have a lot of men that like this one as well. And they really don't appreciate the glitter on the top of their soaps. That yellow is looking rather orange at the moment, but it does change back into a really nice yellow colour. I'm going to give it a quick spritz with some rubbing alcohol and then I'm going to leave it overnight and we'll come back and we'll cut it and see what happens with that swirl and layers. I am back to cut the lemongrass and Persian lime. As usual, this fragrance is smelling absolutely amazing and you can see that that yellow has gone from that sort of orangey colour to that really nice sunshine yellow as it's saponified. To be honest I'm not completely happy with the top, it's not really come up as I envisaged but we'll see what happens when we cut them, hopefully each of those soap curls will stick in the soap. So I've just lined that up on the soap cutter, I've got a feeling I will be cutting some of the lines, we may just miss them slightly but we may just catch just a couple and some of these soap curls may also not cut. So I'm just making sure that I'm not caught on anything. And down and through we go. Now I have actually left these for a little bit closer to about 36 to 40 hours. As when I came to do them last night, I was just so tired. Okay, so we are through and we'll grab a piece from out the middle here. So we can see that is a beautiful swirl that we've got through there. So I'm really pleased I did the three layers with the hanger through the middle. And those um, soap curls, they have kind of worked. They do look a little bit like a blade of lemongrass coming up and out of the soap. And each of those pieces have got their lime wedge on the top as well. So sometimes when you're looking at the soaps from um, on top, they just don't quite look as, as you'd hope. But once you get them cut open, they're actually pretty good. So I, I am actually now really happy, even though I had my doubts on this one when I first looked at it this morning. So 
So I'll grab this other piece as well. I am absolutely loving that swirl. You wouldn't actually guess that I really had done those in layers because the hanger has just pulled those colours. Even this green has come right up the top into the yellow. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So I thought I'd also cut this other little piece that um, you often see me just put off to the side whenever I'm cutting the soap. So I thought we'll cut this one for you as well, just to show I do cut it up. And again, I'm just going through those soap curls. Here is a end piece which we'll be using for samples that go out into orders. Right, so we'll just grab this piece here. So this was one of the first ones where I put the soap curl in and you can see the soap actually did start to push up through the soap, swap, uh, soap curls. That was what I was really disappointed about as I got towards the other end of the soap and it was thickening up too much. I couldn't, I didn't think that the soap was going to hold these curls in but I am so pleased that they have. Now so I'm absolutely loving the swirl that is in this one. The colours really have gone all the way through all the different layers there and especially on that side of the soap. And this piece of soap curl, the way that's cut, is just really nice and does look like there is a blade of grass coming up out of that soap. I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my lemongrass and Persian lime soap. While you are watching this video, I am actually on holiday over in Perth, so if you do um, leave any comments or questions down below, I will get back to you, but I will have very limited access to my internet while we're travelling around and seeing the other side of the country, but as soon as I do have that access to the internet, I will certainly get back to you with um, any answers to questions that you may have. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and if you hit the little bell sign, it will let you know the next time I upload a video because the next few videos were all recorded back in October. I don't have any little sneaky peek um, videos of how I did my prep work, but I do have a midweek video for you as well. So until the next video, have a great week. Bye.